I'm here at the mountain bike trail at Mayberry State Park in Northville, Michigan. I brought with me my 2020 Giant Talon 3 mountain bike. Now in a previous video, I talked about the features and specs of this bike. If you're interested in learning about that, check out the link here. Today, we're going to trail test the bike. Let's get going. Not far into the trail, I realized I had made a grave mistake with the choice of pedals I put on this bike. The bike does not come with pedals when purchased new, which is typical for mountain bikes that are truly designed for, well, you know, mountain biking. So like many people who just blew their entire budget buying a bike, I used the little money I had left over to buy the cheapest pedals I could find at my local Walmart. The inexpensive plastic pedals gripped my shoes about as well as wet bars of soap. Aside from that snafu, the bike felt great. It felt solid yet lightweight, and everything operated with the crispness and smoothness that you would expect from a new bike, even though the bike was now several months old and has seen moderate use. You may have noticed that I'm riding a medium frame bike, despite the fact that giant sizing charts recommend a large frame bike for someone of my size. At 5 foot 11 and 190 pounds, the medium frame bike felt perfectly comfortable However, I did have to have the seat near its highest setting. By the way, I found the seat to be quite comfortable, especially with the help of my padded biking shorts. Now this bike is actually the bike my son rides, and he is 5 foot 9 and 135 pounds. Although I'm comfortable on the bike, he seems to be an even better fit. I would say that if you're between 5 foot 10 or 5 foot 11, you could opt for either the medium frame or the large. But if you're six foot or more, go with the large. The shifting was buttery smooth from the Acera rear derailleur. The rapid shifter allows you to quickly skip several gears at a time when preferred. Now this bike is a 16 speed bike with two sprockets at the crank and eight cogs in the rear. And this works well, but front derailleurs on mountain bikes always seem a bit slow to engage and a bit clunky. The trend these days is to use a single gear in the front and 9, 10, 11, or 12 or more cogs in the rear. Yes, it's fewer gears, but in most cases, all the gear ratios that you'll miss out on really are not needed. The one by gear set was not within my budget at the time I bought this bike, but it surely will be something I get next time around. Nonetheless, the 2x8 gear set managed the moderately difficult Mayberry Trail with no issues. Even the steepest hills within this trail system did not necessitate shifting down into the range of first or second gears. Gears 3 through 8 were plenty enough for this trail. The entry-level Suntour front shocks were just that, entry-level, but perfectly adequate. They add comfort to any ride, and they make it easier on your wrists. But they do feel a bit more like springs and tubes than proper shocks with smooth damping. This bike has the 27.5 inch wheels. My other bike, a Trek Marlin, has 29 inch wheels. On this tight, twisty trail, I found the 27.5 inch wheels preferable, but really, either setup would have been fine. The stock Maxxis tires had worn down quite a bit after just a few months of use, and had a tendency to spin out on some of the steep climbs where loose gravel covered the hard packed dirt. The one thing I did have a hard time with was the extremely wide handlebars. While the wide grip provides for responsive turning, I encountered numerous tight squeezes between trees along the trail where a smaller handlebar set would have been beneficial. I had to slow down to safely navigate between the trees, and I don't like to slow down. So if you're riding on tight trails, you may want to change up the stock handlebars for something a bit more narrow. My one other gripe about the bike has to do with the rather cheap and bendy brake levers. This bike has never been crashed, but it has fallen over several times, and just a simple tip over was enough to bend the brake levers into fish hooks. Overall, the bike does everything you would expect a $600 bike to do, and it does it well. For me, a less wide handlebar, better brake levers, and grippier pedals is all I need to get this bike set up just right for how I ride. Well, that's all I have to say about the Giant Talon 3. Please take the time to subscribe to my channel. Ride safe, everyone.